Join us for an extensive tour of the new BMW 5 Series facelift. We talk about the exterior, new front grille, lighting has changed. You can already see it right here. Interior will be the best Sensatec seats ever. Very interesting. And driving wise, of course, we'll give you a tour of all the new engine lineup and also especially about the new plug-in hybrids. So join us now in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and thank you so much for all long-term subscribers. Here the new BMW 5 Series in the front, BMW 5 would be the German pronunciation by the way. Here you can see the new double kidney, it is wider than before, more aligned with the headlamps and they also receive new daytime running light signatures. LED is the new scheme of course, all over the place it starts already base LED headlamps, they more have a U form as a daytime running light. This is in some markets optional adaptive LED then with this daytime running light form. The US for example will directly start with this here. This is also a matrix LED with high beam function. And the one you can see here with the blue accentuations would be the third step or the second step in the US. This is the BMW laser light. Now again we are allowed in the market up to a 650 meter range of high beam and also with an adaptive function. You can see the blue accentuations also that are actually shining to the top. This again is not allowed in the US because of police regulations. Yeah, it's always so different what is allowed and what not on the different markets, but we try to cover as many deals as possible. But definitely you can remember all the way LED now and also then in different steps. This is also the M Sport model. That means a stronger lower spoiler, also with sporty elements here and here and the color at this vehicle here is called phytonic blue and here you can also see the new turning indicator signature or also when you put on the headlight lights here you can see that the normal daytime running light the second l here is being replaced then by the turning indicator i think a very nice integrated solution and you have it here also the turning indicator in the side mirrors four meters 96 16 foot three or 195 inches two centimeter or one inch longer than before but of course the rear base also hasn't changed it's just a little bit more spoiler overhang because they changed the front and the rear end of the vehicle in the side profile not too many changes besides a couple of new colors Again, the phytonic blue is one of the new colors here you can see the m badge because it's the m sports package which is the design package so you can also pick yeah, for example, the plug-in hybrid and then still go for this M look. 17 to 20 inch wheels available. These are the top ones, 20 inch. It's also a completely new M wheel here for the 5 Series. So a very strong look here already for the plug-in hybrid variant, which will here in the 530e also come for the US. In this case also then with black frames here around the windows but there's also the chrome style available if you prefer it a little bit more elegant other than that the 5 series here sedan typical sedan shape in the european markets you also get the touring which is very famous there and of course with the continuing roof line we we'll soon also talk about the engines let's first finish the rear in the rear you get new tail lamps here too. They are first of all more three-dimensional in the base shape and then also they are directly behind this top layer. Usually manufacturers add another layer on top of it. In that way here you basically 
you're basically closer to the light itself, so it looks even more three-dimensional. Very interesting. Also a new back part here for the spoiler and this M Sports package also adds this diffuser here in the lower rear, a sporty design and also with contrasting color. And again, no job for the Autogefühl fake exhaust police here today because the rear tips here, they are actually going through this one element with the rear exhaust and they're always in this trapeze style now. Technology-wise, by the way, you get a base suspension, you get an adaptive suspension optional, the Touring gets a rear axle air suspension to keep the niveau when you have a lot of loading in the rear. And also, first time now available for the plug-in hybrid versions, so for the whole model portfolio, except the True M model, gets the integral active steering, so that's the rear axle steering goes three degrees in the opposite side from the rear axle than the front wheels for more agility at slower speeds. And you also have a new turning indicator for the tail limbs in a very, very slim style. What do you think about it? Do you prefer it or do you prefer the older one, which was more, you know, higher, wider, more classic? I think it's quite elegant solution. And for another styling detail here, this is a Benina gray color, also very interesting, together with black wheels. So this is this shadow package. 19 inch wheels and we also see some black accentuations here in the laser lamps which one do you like better for today this one here or the blue one and the Benina gray car from the rear they can also take a look at that even this one then here has a contrasting look this is also the m sport model and when it says x drive at bmw with the 5 series it's always a rear wheel biased all-wheel drive and it's also the very same case for the plug-in hybrids because the electric motor is actually before the transmission and so there's no change in the all-wheel drive distribution. As for engines, 2.0-liter 4-cylinder or 3.0-liter 6-cylinder, both petrol and diesel. Then there's also the V8 petrol for the 550i and also for the M5. And new plug-in hybrids with increased electric range, either like this here with the 4-cylinder plug-in hybrid, 530e, or there's also the new six-cylinder plug-in hybrid in the 545e. However, this one here only available as a sedan version and also not coming to the US. Hmm, strange. I think a plug-in hybrid as a sedan here, six-cylinder, that would have been something for the US. Hmm, yeah, sometimes the market strategies are a little bit strange. So again, this here, the six-cylinder PF sedan only, and not in the US. So here the 530E will be the plug-in hybrid version for the US and it will also be available then in Europe as a Touring. And still with 5.9 seconds to 1 km or 62 miles an hour, it still has some decent power and also upgraded range. So now they say is about 60 km or 35 miles pure electric range. And the new battery, 12 kilowatt hours or 11.2 kilowatt hours net. You'll charge it right here, driver side and 3.7 kilowatt max AC charging. Not too much, of course, but you usually leave it overnight and then it's already full again. Yeah, well, and which engine should you pick, actually? Well, the new plug-in hybrids, they're really interesting. I think especially the six-cylinder plug-in hybrid. And may, maybe, you know, when you get some governmental subsidies, especially or taxation um, profits and so on. Other than that, in general, when the plug-in hybrid is not that useful for you from your driving profile, of course, or with the 530D, the six-cylinder diesel with 286 horsepower, or the 540i, the six-cylinder petrol engine with 333 horsepower. Both are really great engines. We've known them before, and these would be the engines to go for from a pure combustion engine point. Of course, they are not the cheapest ones. If you rather want to go in a budget way, then you would just pick the entry fossil in the engine. Interior starts with the key. <laughs> so 
here the normal small key that would be standard or then with the M colors when you have the M Sport model and optional you can also pick this big display key however then you also get the full set so you get the display key and a small one here so you can then also vary or depending on who's using the car um, the disadvantage is this one here the big display key is just bigger in the pocket and so on however I like to have the option to see is the car closed or open at the moment so this is a nice thing to see if you you know if you're not really sure if you have closed the car however the more practical one in general will of course be the lighter and slimmer one <laughs> now with the 5 series facelift you can also use your Apple iPhone to open and close the vehicle with the app so you have to go then inside the app and open it not yet like with Tesla that you just have it in your pocket and then approach the vehicle this will maybe come at the later stage works via NFC and one catch is so far it was available with Android that support is ending then with the facelift because they need to change the system now they go with Apple because they say that more fits to our customers BMW says they have more Apple customers than Android customers and now to the interior. This will be very exciting. First of all, door closing sound. Very solid. Then inside of the doors, you have the sporty insert right there. Is it also in a matte style. And soft touch top part and also here, leather red sensor tag use here at the inside of the doors. Optional Harman Kardon sound system. Also bottles will fit right there. Then it's also here with, again with the M Sport model with the entry badges aluminum pedals the ambient lighting is for example already integrated right here there's also a soft touch right there center tech dashboard is also available by the way then more ambient lighting right there this also then gets the m steering wheel cruise control controls the left side here right side for voice activation if you don't use this hey bmw or also for the volume right here and heated steering wheel if you have the option is activated right there and then big news for the seat in europe you start with a base fabric seat that looks a little bit you know slimmer than this one and is available either with fabric or sensor tech in three colors this one here is the sport seat an option in europe or standard in the us you see with a little bit more bolt string right there so a little sportier style so really cool that they also put it standard for the us and this one here as you can see it right here this is the new perforated sensor tech also available in three colors black beige and brown or cognac they call it very interesting first of all because it is now perforated so it is passively breathable that's definitely a step forward and they massively stepped up the game as for the quality it feels so soft no one could really feel a difference to like the top luxury high class um, most expensive option for the usual animal skin this one here even feels softer than the animal skin option which we also um, can show to you very interesting and the difference by the way if you have the base seat it will look like this perforated all over the place in the sensor tech and if you have the sport seat you also get this quilting structure so this is then reserved for the sport seat only very interesting especially here it feels very plush and soft so this is a massive game changer here in the top luxury segment at bmw and let's get inside seating test so it's really, really comfortable indeed. I've been driving so many different 5 Series throughout the years now, and um, this is really probably the most comfortable seat indeed. You know, no matter now the eth ethical discussion, if I would just take the comfort, this is really soft and plush when sitting on it, and again, a little bit more breathable as for the perf perf perforation. Make no mistake, a pure fabric seat, which we could have in Europe, would still be better as for the breathable functions. It will still be a little bit cooler in summer and a little bit warmer in winter. So just from the climate options, I always, you know, advise to go for fabric seats. But of course, it's always nice to have, you know, this, you know, tactile feeling from the leatherette. And that's also an advantage, you know, and it feels really premium and luxury alike. So very satisfied, a big step forward for, as for this. When you now go a little bit deeper into the uh, sustainability aspect, meanwhile, you can also produce the leather wreath from recyclables. That would be the best way, and it's also being done. We presented you know, a lot of new cars. BMW also does that with their i 
cars, for example, the BMW iCars, BMW i3, for example. Here in this case, not yet the case. So they also want to improve the recyclable share then in the future. But here with these seats, not yet. However, it's a very high grade. And if you then take it into relation, how much oil is being burned for fuel and how much oil you need for producing these leather red seats, it stands in no relation because it's just a very, very tiny share. And for fuel burning and for energy consumption, you use so much more oil. So if you also compare it, like animal skin seed and leather red seed, the overall energy that's being used, the CO2 output, and of course, all the ethical factors for humans, both and animals, so much lower here for the leather red seed. So you burn more oil while producing animal skin because of the energy consumption than for this one. So this one is already a massive step forward. And the best would, of course, be when it's also then produced from recyclables or maybe even plant-based materials. That would be the next step, already done in other cars. But here already for the top luxury segment, I think a very big step forward. Really cool. And headroom here for the 5 Series sedan. 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1. Plenty of headroom left. This one, the version without the panoramic roof. And I also want to show you this seat here. First of all, this is now the animal skin material and it feels exactly the same as the Sensatec. No one can feel or see the difference. Just want to show you this one here as well because this is the beige option just for the coloring and you can get the same color here also for the Sensatec seats. Now the interior overview, BMW 5 Series facelift. You can see the nice ambient lighting integration, of course set to Thomas Blue. And again with the nice insert right there and it's also cool that the screen form here is mirrored in the lower part right here well here a lot of black panel like i use that's not my favorite but other than that we also picked the bright car here just for you as display i told you also the center deck seats are available in the bright style that always gives a little bit more light to the interior here again with the m steering wheel shifting pedals are also available for the combustion engines and the screen setup, it would start with a 5.1 inch small screen with analog gauges still available for the base model. On the right side, then a new 10.25 inch screen, so bigger than before in the facelift. But this one here is the optional setup, two times 12.3 inch, so digital instruments on the left and the bigger screen on the right. However, both screens, the smaller and the bigger one, come with OS 7, Operating System 7 now by BMW. That means over-the-air updates, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the gesture function is always funny. So also Android Auto now available, but both wireless and wireless only. That's, I think, the catch. I like to be able to plug it in if I want to because more secure connect, like more reliable connection to me, I think but only available in a wireless way, but now both systems actually quite cool. Sumo deals to the software here. Then you can see in the lower part, you have these hotkeys here where you can, um, for example, plan some things like here at the moment, mobile devices or here for planning, charging, climate, but you can individualize it totally. There's still a manual, climate, uh, manual, manual volume knob. That's cool. And also manual climate knobs. I like to have these. This really nice function, you have the display right here also, very sophisticated one um, that you can see the temperature, so easy to control it while driving. Also ionization of the air is available, so straightforward still. Then in the lower part, you slide this open, have an inductive charging pad for your phone. However, it tends to heat up quite a bit in these BMW. I think they need a solution for that, maybe a smartphone cooler, <laughs> I don't know adaptive cup holders and there's normal USB A charger in the front but most of the time when you have a wireless connection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto you would use an also inductive charging. Then you have the automatic gear selector here, put it like this or then you can also put it to the left when the car is on for the manual shifting mode. Then you have the driving mode selector, sport mode, hybrid mode in this case because the plug-in hybrid or the pure electric driving mode, battery safe mode. And on the right side next to the touchscreen you still have this Nice sounding selector here, turning and pressing all some hotkeys, for example, for the GPS map and so on. Then this splitway opening of the armrest, good quality, and then there's a USB-C charger in there, but some shallow space only. And if you know me, I still like the BMW Wings 
light design. You know they used to have that on the exterior. Too bad it's gone on the exterior. But I really like it as long as it's still available on the interior. Now to the infotainment screen. Once again, touch here and very responsive, good CPU. And also how you get to your destination, usually pretty flawless. You can either then use it here with, with touch. You can also use the turning and pressing knob here for zooming in and out. Or for example, also the voice input, either with Hello BMW or another activation word. Drive me to Berlin. So you can also set your personal activation word. And here, just Berlin or then to BMW dealer in Berlin. So that works quite well. So very nice integration. What you can also do is set the temperature when the engine is running, for example. So some um, voice command actions only working when the engine is running, actually. Um, or also new for this vehicle is now that you can say, say, lower the windows and then the windows are being lowered. Also interesting voice function, new one. Then the car menu right here. Oh, I also have the color here in the visualization. I like to have these details that they really pay attention that it's the proper color that is being set here for the plug-in hybrid. You can um, also plan your charging, for example, or there's also a preconditioning before departure, not only for heating, as with the independent heating, but with the plug-in hybrids, also for cooling before. In driving information, then, for example, you also have, have some sport displays for G-meter and so on, so you can play around with that a little bit more. Other than that, this is you know, one of the two main menus. And the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto integration, there's a hotkey in the top part. Good integration all over the screen. That's nicely done. And let's listen to some music. Uh, yeah, maybe that's the, the, the proper one for this one. And Harman Kardon optional sound system. And it's a really, really good one. Bim, bim, bim. Wow. Very nice surround sound. Love that. And now we switched to Jonas's phone because he has an Android phone. Then you have the Android Auto symbol in the top part. And for the very first time, yay, in a BMW 5 Series, we can see how it looks like to have the Google Maps integration directly and the Android integration. So this also works very flawlessly. That is the home button. And um, this is how the Android Auto then looks like in this BMW. They will roll it out to all OS 7 systems. So if you have the big screen and the operating system 7 like this, it can also be retrofitted to your vehicle. And of course, for all future BMWs with the big screen, they will have it. And the digital instruments, 12.3 inches, clear to read. And also with a nice blue visualization on the inside. You can have GPS information on the inside. That's also the reason why the RP meter goes counterclockwise. Here, when the engine is not running, you don't see too many information. This is a display car, so we cannot turn on the engine here right now. But other than that, there would be the RP meter or here for the plug-in hybrid. You have like a gauge where you see where you are in an electric state. And then above that, you can see that the combustion engine is on. Very interesting. You can see more of that in the driving part of the plug-in hybrid vehicle. Head-up display. It's not flickering in real life, by the way. It's just hard to put it that way on camera. Speed or also here from an Android Auto, you can pick your music list. And also some GPS arrows will be displayed. And here in this vehicle, there's a feature to that on Autogrefeu as well. Sound design by Hans Zimmer, so for the electric vehicles and the plug-in hybrid vehicles now a startup sound. Like this, and also when you shut down the vehicle. So special sounds for that. Here not yet when you drive electric, so the all-electric vehicles in the future will also have like a driving electric sound design. This is not the case yet, but here then for startup and also powering down the vehicle. Once again. And, and talking about sound design, here in this plug-in hybrid version, there's also a sound design for the engine sound. Just listen to that. So this is a mix then of the real sound you hear and something additionally from a sound actuator over the speakers. And the reason for that is a six cylinder does sound quite nice, but since the car is so well insulated meanwhile, you would not hear so much from that engine. That's why they have an additional boost over the speakers. Yeah, you can argue, yeah, it's pure fake. But yet again, it sounds quite nice, doesn't it? 
this very vehicle here has the option here for the tinted windows in the rear. Looks more sinister. Ooh. Then let's open the door. And you can see soft materials inside of the doors. And again, these insert leatherette covers at the armrests here. And the cool thing is also that for the rear seating, when you have these new Sensatec seats, you have also perforated Sensatec in the rear here. This is very cool. So you also have a little bit more breathable rear and also here in the rear they do not save you know material no cost cutting it's also a very soft one not as plush of course as it with a quilted structure in the front but here also both very high quality and you feel here also the difference this is like the normal more old school one and here then there's also the new perforated one it feels indeed also a little bit better now let's get inside as for the legroom standard of course the face hasn't changed that you still have plenty of legroom right here. Yes, the car is also very long, so it's no wonder. And headroom also directly works for me. The touring version, the estate, of course, would continue a little bit further with the headroom than when you're even taller. And I also fix it the outside part. That's the usual thing. And the cup holders here are also somewhat adaptive. Yeah, let's put them in again. You can also use this one here as a ski hatch. And how we fold the seats completely, we'll do that from the trunk area. Sitting in the middle part, because of this all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive middle tunnel, it works with the legs on the side. And headroom still exactly works, but not the most comfortable one because it's stiffer in the middle part. And they now changed it to USB-C chargers here in the rear also. And you can also get a four-zone rear climate unit. And in this vehicle, you do not have the tinted windows, but you have the manual shades. You can order that as an option like this, and also oh, a tiny separate one for the second rear window here. And another advantage for the sensor tech is here, you can see in the animal skin spec, the rear seating here has no perforation. Whereas in the sensor tech, also with the beige color, you would get also perforation, so a little bit more breathable for rear seats. Boot capacity of a 5 Series sedan, 530 liters. However, here with the plug-in hybrid, you do lose 120 liters, and that's here in height because of the battery, which is placed below this. So, soon more to the measurements. The first visual thing you can see here, you can also put this one here down, then you have more height right here. And if you put it up again, the advantage is that you have an even loading sill. This is very rare for a sedan. Again, you lose in height, but an even loading sill is also good to load things in and out. And if you put a backpack in here, for example, you might think this won't fit because it looks like it would be higher, but indeed, because you know there's some more space at the under part of this boot lift, so this does exactly fit, so it works still with an upright backpack, but once more, if you want more height, then you can put this down again, and then you're a little bit more flexible, because then here the height is about 50 centimeters, whereas with the even loading sill right here, this is just under 40 centimeters so you gain about 11 12 centimeters by that other than that the length right here here about one meters and ten and the width in the top part here is more than one meters twenty however then here more deeper inside this is very narrow only a little bit more than 80 centimeters and then we can also fold the seats right here we have to release them and then have to go around and then you can fold them all flat for the maximum setup like this and this and when you then measure it to the front seats this is also very typical for this segment that you almost get two meters in the length to the front seats and here we go so here they are almost two meters almost a full ruler Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the BMW 5 Series facelift here today also with the 545e 6 cylinder petrol engine together with the electric motor and let me show you an acceleration sports mode so both powers combined combustion and plus electric drive so that was already 50 to 100 kilometers an hour pretty impressive so wow 
really good performance. 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles figure would be 4.7 seconds. So that's a second slower than an M550i. Almost 400 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque for this six and a plug-in hybrid. So very, very decent. And yeah, you can really drive in a very sporty way, no problem. Other than that, most of the time you will leave it in the hybrid mode. Soon going through all details. First of all, in general, about the 5 Series facelift for all the models. Once again, driving has not changed that much. It's a very sovereign feeling. The car sits so calm and good on the road. The noise insulation is superb. It's very silent in here. And you got a natural driving feeling here. Every single half a degree angle is, you know, you do feel everything. There's no dead zone area. Very natural experience, a nice sport experience. Yet again, not too heavy to control while driving. You also see the new turning indicators in the car in front of us. You've probably seen that these are still prototype vehicles, but they are, you know, let's say quite final. There's nothing much that has been changed than there. They just have like a light camo, so the logos are camouflaged, but come on, everyone sees that the 5 Series. <laughs> Not sure what this light camouflage is still, um, you know, supposed to be. I don't know. Here again, when going left and right, this car feels smaller than it actually is because also this vehicle here, this very one, has the option of the integral active steering, means that BMW, the rear axle steering, three degrees in the opposite direction from the rear axle and the front axle. And this gives us so much more agility at lower speeds and also when easing in and out the basement garage, for example, this is so much easier. So this is an option. It's not cheap, no, but it is really an option you should go for because it makes easing this you know, full-size vehicle around so much easier. So that's a very, very good option. Just love driving with that. It fakes a shorter wheelbase, so to speak. And you really feel it's very, very notable. And they introduce it also with the facelift now that you can get it for all engine variants besides the M5. That's the only one it would be possible, but they really decided against it intentionally. That's not M philosophy. They say, yeah, I think it's a wrong decision that it should still offer it. But I mean, yeah, it will not be such a thing for the, you know, for most 5 Series customers. So an M550i with always steering or like with rear axle steering would still be a great choice, definitely. And also for the plug-in hybrids here, this is available. So um, when the battery is depleted, by the way, you drive it like the normal six-cylinder petrol engine, which would be a great choice. So a 540i, maybe Jonas holds the walk-in and doesn't flop around. Thank you. <laughs> It's always good to have a co-driver with me. Yes, I always use the term co-driver, ready speech. That's here. Next right. Next right. Thank you so much. Yeah, and you went like a two left, then three right. And <laughs> Caution, don't cut. <laughs> yeah, we all know it from Colin McRae, really, definitely. So now at 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, again, so silent, although it's so rainy today outside, and then you have more rolling noise from the tires, and also the drops on the windscreen and so on, but still such a sovereign feeling with this car. It's just superb in the riding. And also the new perforated sensor tech seats we're driving on them at the moment. They are really awesome. So yeah, before I could say visually wise, one of the best, well, maybe the best leather red seat ever being, you know, anywhere in the whole automotive industry, I can just confirm that here, it is so soft and plush. Yet again, you have the perforation that it's a little bit more breathable. So, um, and not even from leatherette seats, you know. Also, if you compare it to other um, old school animal skin seats, this is here really superior. So, um, yeah, I'm absolutely flashed by these seats in, indeed. So, really great job that we finally get these offerings also in high luxury sedans. Really, really cool. Sedan versus Touring, by the way, won't matter that much in the difference. This will drive more or less the same. Now, specifics here to the plug-in hybrid. Um, first of all, will it play a massive role if you have the four-cylinder or six-cylinder plug-in hybrid version? Again, six-cylinder plug-in hybrid so far not planned for the US. Um, well, the main difference will, of course, be when the battery is depleted or when you need like the maximum performance. 
Other than that, when you're mainly driving in the electric mode, it won't matter that much. So then the 530e will also just be fine and you can get it in the US as sedan and in Europe you can get it as sedan and touring. Once again, this year at the moment, at this moment, just in the sedan and not in US. Yeah, strange decision, but um, sometimes those market, market decisions are yeah, not very logical, I don't know. So the cool thing is really here, as long as we still have enough power left in that battery, such a flawless driving feeling. It really fits to the vehicle. I mean, we all know the performance versions of the 5 Series presented that to you in Autogefühl. It's really a lot of fun. But here, this silent driving in the 5 Series, it fits perfectly. So if this car would be all electric, I wouldn't mind either, you know? So you have it super, super silent. It smooths the electric acceleration. And here in the instruments, you can also very well see that I think it's well done. Here though, with the blue background in the hybrid mode, normal hybrid mode you start in. When you um, lift the throttle, then you are in the um, charging or recuperation stage. You can see that in the digital gauge. And then there's like a blue area here. And as long as I stay in the blue area, I know I'm driving all electric. And the range here, we got about 11, kiloma kilo, uh, 11 kilometers left, 31 kilometers driven. So yeah, something between 40 and 50 kilo kilometers and something 30 miles of pure electric is indeed realistic with this new battery, a little bit more capacity. Here now, also according to the GPS data, it works even well when you have a GPS um, route set, even better. Um, here, for example, the car knows, oh, this is like a countryside route. We're driving a little bit faster now. So I rather set everything on the combustion engine. Now we're driving on the combustion engine. The transition between pure electric drive and combustion engine, really flawless. You hardly feel that at all. And when we're getting into the city, they also pro program now those E-zones for the cities that you're predominantly driving pure electric inside city centers. I think an interesting idea and also it's switching back and forth here now for example we're going down a little bit then going into the charge mode recuperating once again or for example when I have the throttle like just slightly exactly at zero here in these right gauges then I'm just sailing or coasting and I can also stress this effect because there's the hybrid mode and there's the hybrid eco pro mode and the difference is in the hybrid mode I more have recuperation when I go off the throttle and in the hybrid eco pro mode I rather have sailing when I leave the throttle. You know, here this digital arrow says just at zero. Mm, you can argue pro and con for that, it depends on how you prefer it. If you rather want a feeling, you know, like a normal combustion engine with little engine brake, so to speak and then you recuperate more when you hit the brakes, for example. Or if you rather want this new sailing or coasting feeling, it is very efficient to roll, to coast, to sail. <laughs> yeah, different, um, you know, different expressions for that. And at the same time, here now the map data, for example, realizes, even though I was in the coasting mode, oh, there will be like a next village entry, speed is being reduced, and then the car automatically goes into the charging stage, recuperation, Again, you know, taking this predictive map information, so this is a very good idea to make this, this ride even more efficient. Talking about efficiency, by the way, so when we drive all electric, just pure electric, we have an energy consumption of about 20 kilowatt hours on one kilometer. So this is typical for a big vehicle, also for like a big all electric vehicle. Um, before it was 23 kilowatt hours on one kilometer, so that yes, it's something like um, 30 something kilowatt hours on 100 miles, the translation for that. Um, and that's still, yeah, I mean, it's not super efficient, but it's also no wonder because other big electric, pure electric vehicles, for example, have equal energy consumption when we drive in pure electric. At the same time, we haven't used the combustion engine that often, so we hear at about just over two liters on one kilometers of fuel economy, which is almost nothing. And if we go to the X works stage here, then we can see um, like all this time, this prototype vehicle has been running. It's about six kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers and about 7.3 liters on 100 kilometers, which would be some, something 30 plus MPG US, 40 plus MPG UK. 
this is more mixed, you know. So on the long run, this vehicle has also been um, operated not only pure electric, but also with depleted battery and you know combustion engine running and. It will still be more efficient than the pure combustion engine in most situations, unless you're driving a very, very long cruise control, steady speed mile, uh, mileage, and the battery is depleted. Then the pure combustion engine would be more efficient. But in most other situations, the plug-in hybrid can still play a good role because you can even use this recuperation when the battery is depleted. By the way, there's also um, the battery safe mode called battery control. You can press it here in the middle console when you know, oh, there's like a future, like London probably does, um, an emission zone. You only are drive, allowed to drive all electric, then you can charge it here on the countryside road and then drive all electric at your destination. However, that's not efficient. That would be just when it's really like mandatory by law or something. Then there's also the electric mode where you really say, okay, I want to stay all electric um, and you're a little bit more in control that you actually do stay all electric um, and then here yeah so there's like a bigger threshold um, before the combustion engine hops on but you've probably already seen and heard that when I pin it all the way through then the combustion engine will still be activated for safety reasons for example you might be in the all electric mode and you see oh I want to get on this motorway and I need a fast acceleration to enter the motorway in a safe way. I need a little bit more acceleration. You know, that's all, always why I argue, uh, for example, with your wife or so, yeah, I need the stronger engine version of this car. Just for safety reasons, you know, like when we get to, oh, obviously. <laughs> that was the voice activation that has also been uh, uh, updated, as we told you earlier, with the 5 Series facelift. Yeah, sometimes it catches, maybe, what did I say that it was activated? I don't know. So that's our instructor for the day here because we have like in a combined prototype route. And that's also very good because then you have a 5 series facelift just in front of you here. So to me, it's a lot of fun to drive this 5 series in the plug-in hybrid version because the electric driving modes are really cool. It adds to the silence here. Then you have the recuperation you know that not all the energy is being lost. At the same time, when you are maybe on a longer road trip, you still have the possibility just to fuel up the car in a very fast way and, you know, like making 500 kilometers or 300 miles just in one day. And you still have the possibility to, to do so, even though you know, this, oh, does it really work with its charging stations and so on. So this car can indeed be a very good solution if you're, for example, commuting to work during the week and then go on a weekend trip for a longer period of time or like once a week you have to go to like a distant city and but maybe just once a week and other than that you drive or commute all electric in the city. In Europe, for example, the usual maximum commuting uh, way is about 30 kilometers, like, you know, 15, 20 miles a day maximum. So this would be a good use case then. To me, it's more always about the infrastructure. Do you really have the infrastructure? And if yes, then the plug-in hybrids or then the all-electric vehicles make a lot of sense. So again, facelift driving here with the 5 Series, it's as good as before. The adaptive suspension is one of the best there is. From all suspensions, it's also equipped with this vehicle. You remember, base suspension, adaptive. And the Touring also gets the air suspension at the rear axle. But here the air suspension by BMW in their bigger models is so good that you do not miss an air suspension. So it's one of the very rare cases where I say, I'm not even sure if a full air suspension could give me more comfort here because this adaptive suspension is sporty and comfortable at the same time in a way that you can hardly exceed. We are driving with 19 inch wheels here at the moment. Yes, 20 inch would be possible, even bigger, but 19 inch, already one of the bigger ones, you remember, 17 to 20 inch wheels. So even though those are among the bigger wheels, they are still such a great riding comfort. So bumps in the road are even out so well. Really, really satisfied with that. And at the same time, it's very sporty. There's no body roll from the car and so on. You also have this adaptive button here. This sets the suspension to the 
even more adaptive mode in a way. It's always adaptive, yes, but this more sets the car to when it's realizing you're driving a little bit sportier, then it goes a little bit stiffer, and when it's realizing you're driving a little bit slower and softer, then it's going softer. Mm, yeah, this is combined and also with the hybrid mode here in the plug-in hybrid. You can set it, why not? If you're in the hybrid mode, the usual suspension setting is comfort. And if you are in the sport mode, not only the combustion engine is always on, it's also setting the suspension to a stiffer tone and steering feedback here. Let's compare that. Hybrid sport mode. Yeah, indeed. That's notable. In the hybrid mode here, way softer from the steering. And in the sports mode, we have more resistance. So it feels a little bit crisper here from the steering. Very interesting. So I'm overall really impressed. So um, the first time I'm driving the 5 Series now electrified. There was one before, but I haven't, haven't driven it yet. And the 7 Series I've also been driving with the electrified version and I think it really works very well. This can be a good engine choice for a lot of customers actually. And it really brings more joy, you know. You still have that combustion engine, but this electric driving is really, really joyful. Here at the moment, by the way, again, according to the map data, because we're on the countryside route with 100 kilometers an hour allowed, 60 miles an hour, we're a little bit slow because of the truck here at the moment. But then again, the map data decided, yeah, it's better to have the combustion engine now more efficient, because when you're driving the combustion engine at about 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 60 miles in a steady way, then the combustion engines are like in a very ideal state of efficiency, and then it really makes sense. And again, save the electric drive for city stop and go, because in city stop and go, the electric drive makes more sense. Once again, with plug-in hybrid vehicles, you have the discussions, is it the worst or the best of two worlds? And you can argue both ways, and probably both arguments are right. It really depends on the exact route and your personal use case what is the case you know in this case but in a lot of cases it really makes sense and to me this plug-in hybrid uh, driving yeah, really adds to the overall driving experience so general 5 series facelift once again flawless great addition with the center tech seats rear axis steering great option definitely nice combustion engine choice with both the six cylinder and the six in the petrol if you go just combustion engine for like most fun or still a good fun um, economy relation because they're quite efficient even more fun would be the eight cylinder but then really less efficient for economy models of course the four cylinders both diesel petrol available you can go for that the four cylinder plug-in hybrid will be you know a very interesting choice also for you know when you get governmental subsidies want to keep the price a little bit lower still go for the plug-in hybrid version this will be a very interesting engine as well this one here, combining a little bit more this pure six-cylinder fun with the electric drive, really cool solution, definitely. Yeah, so pretty interesting what I've done here. And you see also design was here with the new tail lamps and also the front lamps we've seen before. Um, I mean, the changes are not that you see it's like a completely new vehicle, but everything they've done, they've touched here, to me is really um, a nice step forward. So um, one of the recent facelifts I'm really very, very satisfied with. And of course, looking forward to your feedback now, what do you think about the hybrid driving experience and about our general facelift driving impressions? To me, it's been like a very, very interesting ride. What about you? And our final data for our test ride for today, even more than 50 kilometers of pure electric driving for the day, so even more than 30 miles, and a combustion engine fuel economy of about 5 liters, we have 4.7 <laughs> liters or more kilometers, but it really varies, you know, it depends on how much you charge and how much you don't. Once again, when you look at these X-Works figures here, for example, where the car has been driving more combustion engine than the combustion engine consumption is higher but yet again then the fuel or the, the energy consumption is lower so it really depends on the they play together and hopefully in the most economical way because here for example there's a very low energy consumption for our drive for today because this is then not only the pure electric driving but the overall energy consumption in an average
And now to our conclusion for today with the new BMW 5 Series facelift. From the exterior, a sleeker design, definitely more playing around also with the light and especially more modern tail lamps that look quite impressive. Then from the interior changes, big news with the new sensor tech seats, so more breathable material, high grade and definitely more sustainable and more animal friendly. So big step forward here for this top luxury segment and even also increasing the comfort. In general, the build quality is very, very high. Also these upgrades then with the infotainment systems, no matter if you stick with the base setup or then with the optional two times 12.3 inch setup, that's definitely also another step forward, so more infotainment use. And again, also for all the Android Auto users that now can also mirror their smartphone right there. It will also show the way for the upcoming BMW models, which are you know also in the pipeline there. Then driving-wise, the BMW 5 Series remains among the best in the segment. It has a very natural driving input comfortable and sporty at the very same time no matter in which version the optional adaptive suspension really does a great job you do not miss any air suspension for that because here also at top of the comfort and top of the sporting at the same time this is also what makes this car special good option when you have the rear exit steering this makes it easier to ease around in the parking lot for example and also gives you some more agility at slower speeds Interesting drive also today with the plug-in hybrid models. Both will be interesting, the six-cylinder and the four-cylinder. If you predominantly drive electric, especially with the city commuting and so on, it won't make such a difference if you're four or six-cylinder. And when you use the combustion engine, it's quite often then when you are on the like, longer hauls and then you might go cruise control. And then again, the difference is not so big between four and six cylinder. So I think if you're not in a market which gets the six cylinder plug-in hybrid, it's not too bad. And here the four cylinder plug-in hybrid, both available with the sedan and the touring. A touring plug-in hybrid, this will be a very, very interesting choice for sure. Yet again, the one we've been driving today, the six cylinder PF, yeah, it's <laughs> quite a nice vehicle, probably also one of the best combinations right there. Good in performance, and still you have this silent driving feeling for the 5 Series, which really, really fits to the vehicle. So, very interesting impressions here today. The only thing that always remains, it's again a car that is very, very high in the price, and the plug-in hybrid won't change it. Unless you get some governmental benefits, then it re can really actually also be cheaper to go for the new PF versions. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Leave us your comments about the 5 Series facelift. Let's discuss it right there and see you next time.